The Tick was a cool comedy cartoon that parodied comic book characters by having them live in an ordinary town. It was funny with a lot of memorable characters such as Arthur. Sadly, it only lasted around 3 or 4 seasons and wasn't given the praise it deserved till around more than 10 years later. Of course, with every successful cartoon, you got a game based off of it. Today we're going to take a look at the SNES version of the tech. You may ask why the SNES version? Because in my opinion, the graphics and music are a little bit better than the Sega Genesis version. The development is a little bit intriguing. It was developed by Software Creations, published by Fox Interactive and released for the SNES and Sega Genesis in November of 1994. Fox Interactive has more of an interesting end than in history. They were formed in December 1994 as so a development and publishing company for titles based off of 20th Century Fox properties. Their first two games published were The Page Master and The Tick. They published a lot more games before eventually getting acquired by Vivendi Universal Games in March of 2003. Then in 2006 was closed down with future Fox Interactive games being published by Fox Digital Entertainment and other third-party publishers. Software Creations, on the other hand, has a fairly intriguing history. According to Wikipedia, they were Manchester-based developers established in 1987. Their games have been up and down as far as quality is concerned. Early on, they developed trash like Silver Surfer and Wolverine for the NES, yet they would work on cult classics such as Solstice for the NES, Plock, and Equinox, also known as Solstice 2 for the SNES. Still, at the end of the day, for every great game they did, like King Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball, they would follow it up with a turd like Carmageddon 64. In their later years, Acclaim would buy out most of their assets and established their own in-house development unit called Acclaim Studios Manchester. Just prior to Acclaim's collapse in 2004, the studio was dismantled and sold off to try and cover Acclaim's financial difficulties. If this is true, overall they were just another company that Acclaim was piggybacking off of to stay afloat because they couldn't on their own merits. There really isn't a story to speak of. I couldn't even find a story synopsis on the game outside of the title cards that said where you're going and who you're going to be fighting. The graphics are good from a screenshot perspective. The game looks like the cartoon, which by itself is an achievement for Night Night 4. All levels feel like places in an episode of The Tick, the baddies are fairly well detailed, and it all has a solid look to it. Where it goes wrong is how repetitive it is. The game loops the same stretch of the level over and over again for each level. Same goes for the enemies. A good beat em up should have between the range of 15 to 20 enemies per level at most. The tick has anywhere from 30 to 90. You know what that means? A lot of fighting the same three enemies again and again and again. This also means this game gets old fast. The audio is also good when you're taking it in bite sized chunks. The music itself is pretty good, it fits into a goofy style of the show. The problem is that, yet again, the game takes so long to get through levels that the music will loop again and again and again. Not to say it's bad, the problem is that it gets old after a while. Not to mention several tracks get, get reused over and over. Considering that this is said to be a 33 level game, it screams either laziness, inexperience, or a bit of both. On a side note, the audio quality on the little bits of voice work is also well done. When the tick calls in Arthur or says his catchphrase Spoon when you finish a level, it sounds surprisingly clear for the SNES. The gameplay is okay. This is one of the ultimate cases of overstating your welcome. This is fundamentally a 2D beat em up and it pads out its length by throwing hordes of enemies at you. More on that later, but let's get into what kind of levels you will be playing. The game has th three different kinds of levels which all play really similar. The first is the 2D beat em up levels. You go from point A to point B, kicking the tar out of enemies and eventually a boss at the end of it. You got a quick damaging combo, a heavy combo, and you get some Arthur to your side to wipe the screen clear of enemies. You also get a power-up that gives you a partner to attack enemies, but it takes away your ability to jump. It plays a lot like Streets of Rage or Final Fight. The second kind of gameplay is the 2D platforming levels. There are two different kinds of platforming levels. The first is the rooftops. You jump around from rooftop to rooftop, avoiding ninja stars, spears, knives, and so on. If you fall off roof, you have to fight a main boss, then get put back where you were, or at least the building you're at. It controls about as good as the rest of the game, which I'll get into later. The other kind of 2D platforming is on tight ropes. You walk on tight ropes above enemies, below, and avoiding 
the same stuff you would on rooftops. The only difference is that if you fall, you can hang off by one hand. After that, if you fall, then you die. Here's what it does right. The game controls are fine. Using your attacks is easy enough, and in general, the controls are effective. They also give you a good sense of power. You really do feel it with Superhuman, considering that the game also has a flick attack. The game also has some diversity. Even though it's fundamentally just a 2D action platform game, it does change up the gameplay enough to keep the game from being stale, out, even if it's for only a few minutes. Where it gets it wrong is the hit detection. Every beat em up like Streets of Rage or Dole Dragon has hits register if you're on the same line of attack as an enemy. Where the tick gets it wrong is that this is a little bit suspect. Unless you're on the exact plane as your opponent, on occasion, hits will be considered misses and it can lead to intentional damage or loss of lives. The next is that while the controls are decent, they could be better. Jumping from platform to platform feels stiff at times and so does the combat. This wears on when we get into how the gameplay overstays its welcome. The last and biggest problem, and I've been saying this all review long, is that the game long overstays its welcome. The developers knew that the artificial intelligence was dumb and easily taken advantage of. So, what do they decide to do? They put pack after pack of enemies in these levels. This does nothing to change the artificial intelligence. It just takes advantage of those players who get bored and just want the game to be over. If they cut out half the padding in the game, then I would say it's a nice little beat em up based on the tick, but because of how the game wears on you, it's a war of attrition just to finish it. Overall, The Tick is an okay game. The graphics are good, it sounds great, and plays fairly well. It would just be a lot better if they cut out half the fat. If you're a hardcore fan of The Tick, then it's a nice collection piece. Otherwise, unless you're a hardcore fan of the genre, I'd be wary of this game. The only other situation I could recommend it is that if you're working on a beat-em-up game, want a game to show you how to overstay your welcome and have it remind you that you really shouldn't. If the levels lasted half as long, that would give it a 7 out of 10. But as it stands, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10.